Hey guys, welcome back for yet another review. Today I'm talking about the new Essie Love line. So this is our new plant-based line, which is really nice. It's made from 80% plant-based materials, made from sugarcane, corn, and cotton. And I'm gonna read this here. It's to replace the conventional petrochemical-based formulas. So the other 20% include mineral-based and organic pigments. Uh, the difference between this line and the Essie line, the regular Essie line is still ate-free and vegan, and they do not test on animals and it's said to be still salon quality and of course this line this newer line is vegan as well and they don't test on animals so that's kind of the difference there I think the bottles are also made from recycled material which is really nice and I believe they're a little bit lighter than their other bottles I love that they kept this same square shape because I really like their square bottles a lot so let's talk about them it does come here like I'm showing you with this base coat I'm gonna show you how I applied it here this is on top of one of their beautiful polishes from this line we'll talk about it in a minute but it has a nice formula it's a little bit thinner than I like I do like one that's a little bit thicker but I felt like it went on very nice and I can't say how it will do as far as wear because I haven't tried it out yet I'm not sure if I'll have time to do that but I did find it to be really nice but not as thin as some it's kind of in between but not as thick as I like as I still use my glisten and glow it's just my favorite one to use and so I rarely use something different but if you guys have tried this out let, let us know down below how much you like it and how you have found the wear time to be okay so these are available now at Amazon I'm not sure if Beyond Polish is going to receive them but I will look into that and once in a while throughout this video you're gonna see this version of me <laughs> I am filming on a different day adding more polishes that came to me in the mail and the polish that I'm wearing on this version of me <laughs> is this China glaze one from their spring collection called sugar junkie and it is amazing that whole collection is amazing. Beyond Polish was supposed to let me know if they were getting more of these in and I haven't checked for a while so I'm going to check on that and see if they are. Grab them. They're all so good. And make sure to check out my review. I'll put a link to that down below. But anyway, I added more. They just keep becoming available on Amazon. And now I have 13 of them for this video. If I decide to get more, I will probably just add another video, but I might not. We'll see. I've got a lot to get through. Okay, let's start with this white one. This is Blessed Never Stressed. And and it's just your typical white. I'm not gonna do any comparison for this white polish just because it's just white. <laughs> and it's a pretty stark white. It's maybe a little softer than Blanc, I would say, but it's pretty stark. Um, it's got a really great formula, I think. I felt like I was so close to two coats, and that's kind of how Blanc is. Actually, Blanc, sometimes I can get opaque in one, but that's only after it's sat for a while and gotten a little bit thicker. So I think as this one thickens up with time, it'll be really, really nice to apply in two coats. I really did like the formula of this one and I thought it was really pretty but it's just a typical white but I think it's nice that they added that to this baseline because it's always nice to have a white in your <laughs> in your main line not much else to say about this one this next one is on the brighter side and we have been wanting a pale yellow from Essie for a long time I know we've gotten a few from the Essie gel couture line and I actually didn't check those so I'm gonna pull that out here in a second but in their regular line they don't have any just straight up pale yellows they did have one in spring collection last year but that's more of a neutral brown so I'm really happy to have this one. It's got a really great formula too. It was so close to two as well, but anytime you apply these light yellows, they're gonna be opaque in three coats. I just find it pretty typical for that to be the case. Let's get into those comparisons. So I compared it to Sing Songbird Along, and that one's more neutral, like I said, and it has a touch more brown. It's kind of a green brown. I really do like that one, but I just wanted a soft, light, pale yellow, and this new one is perfect from this line. And then All Fun and Games, as you can see, is brighter and a touch darker and hey there is maybe even a little brighter and also on the darker side a little bit more leaning toward the mid-tone shade and so I love that they added this one this one was very close to OPI one chic one chic chick I tried really hard to just stick to the Essie line for these comparisons just because I wanted to see how it fit in but there were a few that I added some OPIs because there were a few in here that were closer to OPI colors than they were to Essie uh, but this one I didn't do a comparison for that one but it is pretty close OPI does have some of these lighter yellows so I love that they have this in their line so here's Atelier at the Bay this is the Essie gel couture one and I feel like this one is even a little bit lighter than it so I love it I love that it's just almost white but it's just like a hint of yellow so I like it better than this one so that makes me really happy 
Here we have this beautiful beige and it's called Back to Love. And I love this one. It's quite a bit warmer than a lot of other beiges that Essie has in this shade. So it's a little bit warmer, but it's not super warm. It's got a slight cool tone to it. But I had this on and I wore it outside for a little while and I love this. I usually don't go for nude shades, but this one just really has me. I don't know why. I think the little bit of warmth in it is just really nice on my skin tone right now, especially because I'm starting to get maybe a little bit tanner, not a ton, but I just love the warmth and I think as I get tanner it'll look even better because there'll be even more contrast. So this was one of my favorites actually from this collection. I love it and the form is really good. It's going to be opaque in two coats. You might need three. I do have a high ridge on one of my nails so a lot of the times I'll have to do three so sometimes that throws me off. I would say two coats but you might have to do three depending on how you apply it. But let's get into comparisons. So I compared it to In Good Taste and you can see that one's the closest that I had that I'm looking through my polishes and that one's a little bit cooler. Wild Nude is even cooler than that, so it does lean a little bit more gray. And then Bear With Me is quite a bit warmer and peachy, so a lot of shades that Essie has like this that are beige or a little bit on the cooler side and then they have a lot of really warm peachy or warm or rosy so I do think this one's quite different at least and I just really love and it. This one is free in me and I like this one. They have been coming out I feel like the last couple years with a lot of these softer muted pinks and I'll show you how they compare in a second but the formula on this one's really nice too. Two coats for this one. It builds up very nicely. I feel like this one is a little more pinky leaning. This is like a mauvey pink and they have different various <laughs> shades of mauve -y. they have like mauve -y or red and they have mauve or brown and mauve or purple and mauve or pink and this is more mauve or pink so let's look at those comparisons I compared it to into a bliss and that one's close but more plum so that's more of a like purple mauve and then air spun fun was quite a bit lighter which surprised me but it is a similar color tone and then young wild and me is more of a peachy mauve I couldn't find one that was just exact it was driving me crazy but I really do like this one pink on canvas from OPI is closest it's it's just a touch darker and rice rice baby which it instantly reminded me of is a little bit darker but kind of close and then Susie calls the paparazzi is more of a rosy warmer mauve so this one is just a little bit different there are tons of those mauve shades though a lot of them are a lot more brown so I didn't pull those in but that hopefully gives you an idea of what kind of shade this one is but I actually really like it it's really soft I find myself probably wanting to wear this as we kind of transition to fall so it's a really nice shade then we have have Spinning in Joy and this one is a little bit darker than this one and a little bit warmer along those same kind of lines. This one has a fantastic formula as well. Pretty much goes on in one coat. You might want to do two but man it's just a beautiful beautiful formula. I love how this applies and this mauve is really rich too. So let's see how it compares to other Essies. So I compared it to Pin Me Pink and that one's pinkier <laughs> and then Flying Solo is more of a coral mauve and just grow with it is lighter and a little bit grayed out mauve and I couldn't find an SE like this one either I felt like they were more brown and warmer oh, man it was so hard these mauves are hard and so are reds <laughs> So the comparisons were tricky, you guys, but hopefully that will give you an idea of where this color is as well. Uh, but I really liked this one too. And if you like mauve pinks, this one I feel like is a little bit richer. And so I liked it a lot. Then we're going to get into this beautiful hot pink. And this one is Self Love Rush. And I really love this one. This is the one that I'm actually wearing on my nails. This one has a really great formula as well. It's so close to one coat. My live swatches, I did one coat, but then when I was painting my nails, I was like, oh, I actually prefer two thinners, which I typically do. But I think you really could get away with this in one coat. It has a beautiful formula. I love how rich this color is. It has quite a bit of uh, white in the base as well, so it's got a really nice opaque formula, especially compared to other hot pinks that Essie has. I compared it to I'll See You Later, and that was more pinky and has more of a crelly formula. And then Too Taboo also has like a crelly formula. In fact, that formula is not that great. It's quite a bit older. I still like that polish, <laughs> but it's not the greatest formula. And that one's a little bit more purple and maybe a touch darker. And then the fuchsia is bright, which is a really nice polish too. Also has that curly formula. Same kind of color idea also. So I really liked this one for the fact that the formula was really fantastic for this hot pink. And I love it on my nails. It's more of like a berry pink. So it leans a little bit warm, but it does have some purple in it too, which is really nice. So um, this one was fun too. I'm really in the mood, obviously, for these pinky shades because I put it right on right before this video. Next up is Get It Girl. And this is a beautiful purple toned pink. 
it's definitely a little bit more purple leaning we have so many of these <laughs> coming out recently and I'm not complaining about it so I think it's I think these are really popular right now so I think it's fun that they added this one to this line because they wanted a good base of colors that people are generally gonna like but it has a fantastic formula as well one to two coats for this one depending on how you apply it but it just goes on super nice and glossy it's just so refreshing to have these nice opaque formulas this one has quite a bit of white in the base as well so let's look at how it compares because there's a lot fuel your desire is the closest but it's maybe a little bit lighter that was from the Valentine's Day collection this last year swoon and lagoon is more pink and then flowerista is a deeper purple I'm gonna hold these up so in the universe you can see is a little bit lighter um, from their new spring collection. Oh, I gotta put this one back on. I love it so much. This is a little bit deeper. So it's a little bit lighter than Flowerista, but the same kind of idea. Um, now it's so interesting how dark Flowerista is now. I used to think it was kind of lighter like this, but it's definitely quite a bit richer and darker. And I'm definitely liking these lighter ones. And if you didn't pick up the one from the Valentine's Day collection, then it'd be a good time to pick this one up. This is from the OPI Spring Collection. This one's called Check Yes or No, which I really love too. That one's really close to this one. It's just a little bit lighter. So um, if you have that one, you might not need this one. But if you want to invest in this Essie Love Line, this would be a good one to grab. I have Putting Myself First. This is a beautiful periwinkle blue. Um, the formula is really great on this one too. I would say two coats for this one, but it builds up really nicely. The brush on this, let's talk about the brush for a second. The bristles are a little bit more on the stiff side, but they're fine. I just felt like I didn't press down as hard. I floated a little bit more with these, but it really wasn't an issue. But it's definitely a little bit different. You can tell it's made from recycled materials, which is the whole idea behind this line. So it's a little bit different, but the shape is the same. And so I would say I'd give it like an eight out of a 10. I'd give the regular Essie line brushes a nine out of a 10 and the Essie gel couture brushes a 10 out of 10. So that's how I would rate them. So this is probably my least favorite from all their lines, but it's still really nice and it goes on pretty great. It just felt like it was a little bit thicker than my liking, but not, not too bad, not anything to really plain about, especially compared to their old skinny brush. <laughs> we'll take anything but that. But this one did apply very nicely. I just wanted to mention that about the brush. Okay, so let's get into the comparisons to these. I'm going to start with the Essie set and then I'm going to go with the OPI set because I knew I would get asked about so many of these because this one's just a little bit different and leans a little bit more purple. Essie has a lot of these that are either more purple or more blue. This one fits kind of in between, which I really love about this one. I compared it to She's Picture Perfect. That's more of a muted purple. Lila Lilacism was lighter and more purple and plant one on me was more of a purpley gray and then all the other blues that they have like uh, find me an oasis are really light pale blues and more blue leaning so I didn't compare it to any of those and let's look at the OPI comparisons that I have can pie OPI is grayer and more muted and you're such a Budapest is more purple and I am what I am at this which is one of my favorites is lighter and more blue which I found really interesting. Virgin Snow here is just a little bit more blue and this is a little bit more purple leaning um, but they are kind of close but this one's definitely more purple. I love this one so it's kind of a touch more purple than Virgin Snow. And then we have Playing in Paradise and I love these kind of periwinkle purples. This one's really pretty. It's got a brightness to it that some of the other Essies that are similar to this don't have and I'll show you that in a minute. But I also wanted to show you how it compared to this one that we talked about here. This one is putting myself first. This one's a little bit more blue leaning. The formula is really great on this one too. I would say two coats for this one. I felt like it was so close to one coat and I can't remember if I just did one coat in my life swatch but I, I definitely prefer it with two coats for sure it's got a really great formula okay let's get into those comparisons so I compared it to in pursuit of craftiness and that one was very close in tone but it's much more muted it's not as bright like I mentioned playing in paradise has quite a brightness to it and then this OPI this Galleria one is the closest and it has subtle shimmer in it though and it's maybe a touch more blue but that one's pretty close and then plant one on me is lighter and more grayed out there were quite a few Essies that were kind of close to this but were shades darker than it or they were more of a rich purple or a rich blue so I do feel like this one's a little bit unique as well. I like this one too. And this is Good Impressions. This green I was super excited about. I love these tones of greens. This one is a little bit more blue leaning um, but I would still call this a green. Would you call this a green or would you call it a blue? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it's just gonna depend on what you have next to it but I do feel like it's a little bit more green leaning and it does have a little bit of brightness too it's really fun and light and springy but I also feel like it'll be a good transition color to fall but the formula on this one's really fantastic too it's gonna be opaque in two coats too I would say I think this one's super close to one coat too but I did two for my picture swatch and let's get into those comparisons so you can see I really thought it would be close to vested interest here by Essie one of my favorite Essie shades that's been discontinued for a super long time I thought for sure looking at the pictures online it would be exactly like that but as you can see it's darker and that one's more green leaning such a great polish for fall if you can try to hunt that one down do it it is so good and then Bon Voyage is lighter and more of a sage green and then Caught in the Rain is very close that one just leans a little bit more green and is maybe a bit muted and that was the closest that I could find I do think I like Good Impressions a little bit more although I love them both just because Good Impressions is a little more green and then Bon Voyage I put on there because that is a lighter sage green and they Essie does seem to have a lot of shades like that this one that I have here is a little bit more mid-tone so it's a little bit different and I love it I love it for this line I and then the reds I have this more orange leaning red it's quite a bit orange and it's got quite a bit of white in the base as well it's got a nice opaque formula it's gonna build up really nicely in one to two coats I like this one a little bit more than the one from their new collection and I think I compared it to it so you'll see that in a minute this one's a little bit more red than that one that one's quite a bit more orange or maybe I didn't add it because it was more orange we'll see in a second I liked this one I tend to like pinky red Reds, like the next one I'm going to talk about a little bit more than these orange reds but let's see how it compares to other Essies these comparisons are so hard though you guys <laughs> I really just pull like four that I think are the closest and I slap them on and show them to you guys and you guys can kind of get an idea of what kind of color it is because there are tons of them this isn't anything new but I did find this one was slightly different and the formula is so much better than some of these other ones so Fifth Avenue we have hiking hills and color binge and you can see them all there and see the difference differences and yeah I didn't compare the new one from the um, summer collection because it is quite a bit more orange hopefully that gives you an idea of what kind of shade this is but it has a really nice formula that is I am the spark and this is a more kind of deeper raspberry red so more pink leaning which I definitely love this one has a fantastic formula as well it's going to be opaque in one to two coats and this one has quite a bit of white in the base as well and so like I mentioned it's going to be really opaque so it's a little bit different compared to some of the other reds it reminded me a lot of the formula of with the band and that one definitely is a more opaque red but that color tones a little bit different than this one let's see what I did compare it to though I compared it to double breasted jacket be cherry and cherry on top and I think cherry on top is maybe the closest um, but not exactly the same but I love these kind of cherry reds these are some of my favorite essies especially those last two the be cherry and cherry on top so this can be added to my list as well so hopefully that was helpful and then the deepest red that they have is I am the moment and this one's quite rich and deep it's a dark red but it has a little bit of plum undertones in it it's very beautiful the formula on this one's really nice and glossy and just builds up really nicely in two coats I think you'll be curious to see how it compares the formula on this one's quite opaque so when I compared it to make uh, mocking me happy that one's but has more of a crelly formula and then hear me Aurora is maybe a little bit more red and not quite as rich but that one's quite close too. and then nailed it which is a darker one but that's definitely more berry toned and more kind of raspberry leaning so this one's pretty too I'm going to show you all the reds together so you can see the differences the orange this one's more red and this one's more of like a a more plum red that's a little bit more rich so I actually love this entire line I like all the polishes that they have I feel like they did a really good job at making this really cohesive and making some fun colors that everybody's going to love and of course I love that they're all creams because I'm just really wanting the creams lately I decided to be pretty picky and pick my favorites I'm gonna pick these three for my very 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 favorites um, I like all of them though honestly I don't think you can go wrong with any of them but the green of course is good impressions and then the pell yellow which is on the brighter side and then playing in paradise which is the periwinkle purple yeah so I like I said any of them are great I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with any of them I didn't find them to be any different than Essie's main line as far as application goes as far as where I'm not sure that'll just take me some time to maybe get to that but if any of you guys have tried them out let us know in the comments down below how you felt they were and if they they lasted long for you. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me and I, I will see you in my next review. Bye guys.